Hello, Daz creators. This is Not From This World, and I want to welcome you to my tutorial series. Now, today I want to talk about three post-work tricks that I've used in GIMP. So we're not actually going to be working with Daz Studio tonight. We're going to be creating some post work and giving you some tips on post work in GIMP. Now I have to say the first thing that I would recommend is that you try and minimize any post work. I try and set everything up in Daz Studio as perfect as I can get it so that I don't have to do post work. And I know maybe some of you like post work, but I personally do not, so I try and make everything as perfect as possible before I render. Of course, you know, if you have the time, you can go back and re-render things after you correct them, and I do that too. And I really do try and add as much as I can to the DAS program so that my post work is at a minimum. Sometimes that just doesn't work. I render a series of pictures or something like that, and I just don't have time to go back and redo them, so I have to do some post work. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up GIMP, and I have um, some pictures that are ready to go, and we're going to edit them. I deliberately made a few mistakes just so I could show you how I would use GIMP. We're going to look at these three tricks. Now, I probably use these three items like 90% of the time for GIMP. I just use them over and over again, so they can become a huge asset. So I have three pictures here of Milica just kind of standing around with a background. I want to show you what I would do to fix this picture. The first thing that you may notice is I deliberately put a spotlight in the wrong spot so it's leaving this dead space in each of our pictures. So to fix this, if I rendered up a bunch of pictures and I needed to fix this, I would probably do it with the lasso because the lasso is going to allow me to copy and paste parts of the existing scene. So if I select this lasso, I can kind of go above or below this spot right here that I need to cover up and just make a simple circle, connect it, and then just hit Control C to copy, and then Control V will paste it, and see then I can move it over and because this is the background, I can easily just kind of match up that fence, click away from it, and it's gone. So the lasso is super cool. So another example would be, I can use the lasso tool to go around and just copy a few more leaves if I want to add leaves. If I don't have time to go back into Daz Studio, I can just lasso some of the leaves, hit Control copy control V for pasting and then see I can just move some of these leaves hit control paste again and add them to the scene so I'm just hitting control paste over and over again what's really cool is if I don't want redundancy where I have the same leaves I can leave this highlighted with the lasso and go to the rotate tool which is just a couple over hit the rotate tool, rotate the leaves however I want. So I can flip them upside down, for example, and then just hit the rotate button. And now go back to my lasso and I can change the position of the leaves. So that's gonna keep things kind of random. What's really cool also with the lasso is I can become really detailed in things that I want to select with the lasso. So like for example, if I like this flower and I want to move this flower maybe to her hair, I could do that in Daz Studio of course and I actually have quite a bit. Um, you know, you can just select a flower, move it to her hair. But let's say I don't have that option in Daz Studio, I can easily do this 
in GIMP by just zooming into the flower. And then with my lasso selected, I can just outline the flower. This takes a few minutes because I want the flower to be kind of natural looking and I don't want to get a lot of the background to the flower if I'm going to put it in her hair. Luckily Milika's hair is black so if we get any black background it'll just blend right into her hair hopefully. But you can see I'm just clicking to outline the entire flower here. I'm going to go back to my first original um, click and now I have that flower outlined. I'll just hit control copy, control paste, and now I can move that flower up to her hair. So let's do that. Now it's in the same position as the background, so I can take and rotate this. So we're going to choose the rotation, and I'm just going to rotate it so that it doesn't match exactly what we have in the background. Let's put it like, well, I think that looks good. We'll hit that rotate. I'm going to go back to my lasso, and then we're just going to move it. And this may look a little goofy, but it gives you the idea. Once I'm happy with where it's at, I'm just going to click away from the flower itself, and there it is. So when we go back to our original view, which it's 67% as a default, but then when you change things, you got to go back to 50% um, or 100%. And that will get us back kind of away from zooming in. And you can see that looks actually really good. Okay, so the next tool that I use almost all the time is going to be this smudge tool. So if I look at it, it looks kind of like a finger pointing. This is the smudge tool. And I can take this smudge tool and I can blend. And so on this picture... If I don't like something, if um, a lot of times, like um, my character might have a shadow or something that I don't really like, like if we zoom in, all I have to do to zoom in is go to view, zoom, it's at 67%. I can zoom to uh, 200. And you can see that uh, this is, doesn't really bother me, but I'll just use this as an example that Milika has a kind of a shadow on her neck here. If I wanted to get rid of that shadow, I can use the smudge tool. And um, the smudge tool, when you click on it, you're gonna have a menu that pops up. You can change the size of your smudge. So see here, it's pretty small at 15, but if I move it up, it gets bigger and bigger. For this, if I wanted to blend her skin right here and get rid of that line, I would go kind of to a small setting on the smudge and then you click on it and you just kind of move your mouse and, and blend this smudge out. So see I can just kind of take this and blend that line away. Now this is just something that I use all the time if I have little mistakes. I'm often using the smudge tool. So you need to play around with that smudge tool. It's pretty cool and then you can get some uh, nice post work done with it. Um, it's especially good with the backgrounds. So if I take this and I view back to, well, 50%, you can see that her neck, that line is now just kind of blended in. So I do that a lot when I need to try and use the smudge. All right, another thing I can do is, you notice she has kind of a wrinkle on her butt here. So I can use that smudge to get rid of that wrinkle. So let me show you. We'll just select the smudge. I'll zoom in to about 200%. And if I don't like that wrinkle, I can just smudge it out by just clicking on it and kind of rubbing it the direction that I want to get rid of it and see that wrinkle is gone. So the smudge tool comes in very handy. Now the next thing I want to mention is if you render and you have kind of an overall brightness or overall darkness that you need to 
change rather than go back into Daz and re-render, set up your um, spotlights and everything differently. If you don't have time for that, you can go to Colors in GIMP, go down to Exposure, and then in Exposure, you have two bars. You have Black Level and Exposure. And if I click on this Exposure, I can brighten the scene up or I can darken it down. So you get a nice contrast. See, I kind of like this a little bit brighter. It brings out our character here. And, uh, you know, anytime we can highlight her, that's a good day. So I'm going to hit OK if I like that. And then I have it a little bit brighter. So for this picture, I would need to use that lasso again on my messed up spotlight. And we could just create a fix here. Control C, Control V, and then I'll just grab this and move this up. And now we have that mistake fixed. It's important to note that when you have the lasso in GIMP, if you highlight something with the lasso, if you don't hit Control C to copy, you can kind of mess things up. So if I hit Control Copy, and then control paste, I can move this around. If I change and go to the rotate tool, I can rotate this, but I have to come up here to the rotate menu and hit rotate. If I forget to do that, nothing will happen. If I rotate it, I can't move this. If I wanted to move this somewhere, you'll notice it just goes right back to the rotate option and then I'm just spinning it around. So if I want to move it again, I'm going to have to go back to the lasso and then I can grab it and move it around. So that's just a little trick uh, with GIMP. I don't know what Photoshop is going to do because I don't work with Photoshop ever. I think I've told you in some other videos, I am just a complete idiot when it comes to Photoshop. I know it'll do all this stuff, maybe even better than GIMP, but I've just always played with GIMP because GIMP costs nothing, and I don't need an entire class to learn how to use it. So um, I've learned GIMP through some tutorials and that kind of thing, just like what I'm presenting to you. And uh, GIMP works really well. You know, this free program is pretty amazing what it can do. And I hope you check out some of my other videos that show you GIMP in action as well. So these were just three things that I do for post work the most often. And so I suggest that you just kind of play around with GIMP. Check out my other tutorials on GIMP and just kind of build your knowledge on how to use these intricate programs. Now, how I save in GIMP is I always, for some reason, I don't know why, but I will always come up to File and go to Export As, and then it just has the same name as the original picture, and I just hit Export, hit Replace, and then it just copies over the original once I hit this export button. So now this, this picture is saved with the changes that I've made so I can X out of it. Uh, when I X out of it, it'll just say, ask if I want to save as, you can save it as, or you can just discard, that's what I usually do. So now this picture is edited so I'm going to go export it as, hit export, replace. Then it comes up with this again, export. I can click out of it, just hit discard. Now I have my other picture here. I changed it a little bit. I got rid of that spotlight and now I can just save it. Okay. So that is gonna about do it for these three tips. So play with the lasso, the smudge tool, and then play with your color menu and exposure. So I'm gonna give you some more tips on GIMP as we go through the tutorial series. 
Don't forget to check out my older ones because I use this quite a bit. Um, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I use GIMP pretty exclusively for editing. So check that out and you'll be able to uh, start learning how to use this really cool program. All right, so that'll about do it for this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'd like to um, hear what you have to think about GIMP. If you use Photoshop, you'll have to adapt this video to Photoshop. I'm sorry I can't help you with it, but I just don't know Photoshop at all. But don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me those comments. I love to hear from you. All right, until next time, have a wonderful evening and happy rendering.